or something. Someone else has given them some gifts. And someone else has offered them some food. And someone else will offer them a lot of money for some other heroes. We have to make the investment in the strangers. Uthman ibn Mad'oom, Zayd ibn Haritha, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. Look at these people. Tell your sons about Usama ibn Zayd, that 16 year old boy who the Prophet said there was none better than him except his father. And so he appointed him as the Amir of the Jaysh al Muslimin. While Abu Bakr was living, and Umar was living, and Uthman was living, and Ali ibn Abi Talib was living, and other companions of the Prophet ﷺ that was twice and three times his age. But the Prophet ﷺ took that young boy and made him the commander of the Muslim army. Because he said there was none other better for that job except his father. And who was his father? Zayd ibn Harith who had memorized the Qur'an directly from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to tell who is Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the commander of the first Muhajirun, those that went to Habash. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam handpicked him and sent him with those people to be their commander, their Amir. And it was Ja'far, who spoke to the, to the Najashi and touched his heart. And later on, it was Ja'far who convinced him to become a Muslim, the king of a country. And we know he became a Muslim because when he died and the Prophet ﷺ found out that he had died, the Prophet stood up وسلم, and he made Salatu Janazah for him. O oh, Muslims, Khalid ibn Walid, Qais ibn Sa'ad ibn Ubaidah, Umair ibn Wahab, Abu Dardai, Talha ibn Ubaidullah. Tell them about Abu Dhar al Ghifari. Abu Dhar, that man the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Abu Dhar will walk alone, and Abu Dhar will die alone, and Abu Dhar will be raised up on the day of judgment alone. Not because he did something wrong, but because Allah distinguished him that way. Abu Dhar, who was from some of the worst of the criminals, who used to lay and wait for people on the paths in different places to rob them. Who was known, and his people was known. But yet when Abu Dhar became a Muslim, he was the person, the Prophet wasallam said, the minds of the believers, he said the believers, they are like minds of gold and silver. The best of them in the Jahiliyyah, they will become the best of them in the day of Islam, if they believe, if they believe. And look at Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar, when he became a Muslim, he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallahi, I go today to the Haram, and I will tell them, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and I don't care. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't do that, they will beat you. He said, I will do it. And Abu Dhar, he went to the Haram and he faced them and he told them by their names, I am Abu Dhar. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Who, who doesn't like it? And they jumped on him and they beat him until they knocked him out. And when he became conscious again, he stood up and he said it again to them and they beat him and knocked him out. 
And he continued to do that until the Prophet ﷺ ordered Abu Dhar to leave Mecca because he knew they would kill him. And Abu Dhar, he left. And the next time that Abu Dhar came back, he came back with his entire tribe. All of them saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. This is Abu Dhar. And we Muslims, some of us, we are Muslims for 20 years. We're born Muslims. And we are 50 years old today, 60 years old. And we have not given one shahada where we live. We did not give one. Because we say, my family is Muslim. My father is Muslim. My grandfather Muslim. My great-grandfather Muslim. MashaAllah. But you don't say to the kafir who you work with, and you don't say to the kafir you go to school with, and you don't say to the kafir who enters, your non-Muslim who enter your store, you do business with, you don't say to your neighbor who's a non-Muslim, you don't say what Abu Dhar said, you don't say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. You don't share the treasure of Islam. My brothers and sisters in Islam, The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The three things, whosoever have them, have tasted the sweetness of faith. One, Allah, a person loves Allah and His Messenger more than all else. Secondly, he loves a person only for the sake of Allah. He loves a person." for the sake of Allah, not because he is my countryman, not because he is my family, not because I know him very well, not because I hang out in the street with him, not because we watch television together or we do business together. No, you love a person only because for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you hate a person for what? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third characteristic is that you hate going back to kufr as you would hate being driven into a fire. So when a Muslim, he thinks of the act of kufr, because here it doesn't mean to become a kafir. It means to do an act of kufr. So when the act of kufr, you, when you think of it, you think to yourself, that the fire is next to you and someone is pushing you into it, then you know you have Iman. But if the idea of fawahish comes to your mind and nothing happens inside of you, you don't have it. If you lie to earn some money, the Prophet ﷺ never lied to earn some money. If you're willing to steal something from a kafir simply because he's kafir anyway, you don't have it. Because the Prophet ﷺ never stole from the kafir. Because if it was legitimate for the Prophet ﷺ to steal from the kafir, he would have took that money which he had in his house that he was holding for the Quraysh. There was people from the Quraysh who had gave the Prophet ﷺ money trust and even they were hating him his message and even though they were fighting him against his message and even though they were killing and torturing his followers and even though they had plotted to come to his house and kill him not one time did they come to him and say give me back my money he was holding the money for them and the reason that he left Ali ibn Talib, ibn Abi Talib in his bed when they came is so that Ali radiallahu anh, could give them the money that he was holding which belonged to them. So if it was lawful for the Prophet sallallahu to take some money from the kafir because they were kafirs, that was a good time to take it. But he did not because he was 
al Amin. O Muslims, we must be willing and courageous to be strangers. Being a stranger will result in change. People will change simply because you begin to practice, you begin to pronounce, you begin to establish yourself around them as a Muslim. You see, if you go work for some Kafirs and your name is Abdul Rabb, and you tell them my name is Rabi, you open a store, your name is Harith, and you say my name is Harry. <laughs> because you want to have good relationship with them. Then one day you wake up and you tell them, no, 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 my name is not really Harry. My name is, my name is Harith. My name is, in fact, my name, full name, Muhammad al Harith. So don't call me Harry no more. No, we will call you Harry. We don't care. Otherwise, we go to another store. You say, go to another store then. So you don't care because you wake up and you want to respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to respect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to respect this deen. So there will be a change in their attitude. If you work with the non-Muslims, and because you don't really want to disturb them, you don't want to create no problems with them, you don't pray Dhuhr, you don't pray Asr, you don't pray Jum'ah, because you don't want to create no problems with them. And so they will respect you. They say, Muhammad, he's a moderate Muslim. I don't see why the rest of the Muslims are not like Muhammad. The others is extreme. They, they grow their beard long, they wear these clothes, and they got to go on a uh, Friday. And they got to be praying on the job. They're these extremists. But Muhammad, he's a good guy. He don't do that. He's very moderate. That's why we like him. So one day Muhammad, he wake up. So 12.30, everybody go for lunch. They say, Muhammad, come, we're going downstairs for lunch. Muhammad said, no, that's okay. I'm going upstairs to pray. They said, what? What's, what's going on with you, Muhammad? <laughs> and Friday comes. And Muhammad, he leaves at 11. They say, where are you going? I'm going to Jum'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha nudi ala salati man yawmu jum'ah fas'au ila dhikrullah. And he translated to them. If you want to fire me, you fire me. If you want me to, I work night shift, I work midnight shift, I work holidays, I work Saturday, I work Sunday, I work double shift, I work any time. But Jum'ah, Allah's time. See you. <laughs> they said, what happened to Muhammad? A couple of months later, Muhammad, he got the full beard. Now Muhammad got a lihya. I said, Muhammad, what happened to you? You looking like uh, Osama bin Laden. <laughs> you looking like these uh, Qaeda guys. What's going on with you, Muhammad? You could become extremist. Muhammad said, no, I did not become extremist, and I don't belong to any group like that. This is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Maybe they will respect Muhammad even more. But Muhammad, until he does that, he doesn't realize it. He's thinking that if he just go along with them, maybe they will like him. No, they won't. They will never be satisfied with you, Muhammad, Ahmed, anyone, until you leave your deen. And even if you leave your deen, they still will not be satisfied with you. They will still say to you, yeah, I know you change your religion and you this and that, but you're still a Muslim. They still will not respect you. So therefore, the only respect we should look for is the respect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.